<laughs> I J. That wasn't too bad. I know, that was I dope. Thought, I thought it was going to hear something really fucking horrible, but... That shit that was, was hard, cut. Hey, we recording, cut? I think we are, cut. Yeah, we are, cut. We coding. IJS Radio. That's right. That's who we are. That's who we be. Fuck you. Um... That's dope, man. How do you know we're... We always have, Wait, like... Don't, because I can see... When it's pink, that means it's recording. And yeah, when you see should... our wave going up and down, that means it's picking up. But I don't see it. Ah! No, no, no. no but I don't see, see the wave form forming while it, we're recording. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's there. The thing is, it's you don't see there. it because it's not zoomed in, and I can't zoom in right now because it's recording. Here at IGS Radio, <laughs> uh, we have recording problems. It's and not a problem. Skip, you just think it's a problem, skip, but I know no, my we've had problem. No, we've had right, problems. But this one is not. This one is not. You a, see, it's the clock is running, everything is fine. Well, the NSA and all them like to uh, you know drop our shows out when yeah. we're in the middle well, of fuck, live recording. Fuck the NSA. No, yeah. man, I love them fools. Actually, no, NSA, if you're listening, and we know you are, I love you, dog. I want. Yes. I want to. I want to have your shit. baby. Yeah, yeah. I want you to just like pay me, give will, me that NSA. Will you marry me? I just want six hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars a year in hush money, yeah. uh, and fucking. We, we, we'll, this show will go all back to being about um, the you know. Did you see the uh, uh, Kardashianites? Did yeah. you see the season finale of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? You know, I don't watch the show, so no! Oh, god damn, that shit is hilarious. Why don't we raise it up, no? It's fine, dude. Okay, maybe. Oh, we good, we good. Maybe. No, when I say raise up, I mean raise the truth out of, up out of its spider hole, like Saddam Hussein. Because the truth is like a, you know, Mesopotamian dictator, evil guy. Right. Truth or villainy ass motherfucker. So tell me about Love and Hip Hop. I think you already um, told me this. Yeah, it was uh, uh, Stevie J, the main character. Of the show. Yep, Stevie J. He's like the most scandalous motherfucker. He's scandalous. Ever. Yeah, he's, but he's, it's just hilarious he's watching the- how this guy acts. He basically, at the end of the, the season finale, like, he gets his uh, uh, his girlfriend slash mistress that he cheated Preggers. on his baby mama with, uh, Rosalind, the girl, Rosalind. the singer like, or something like that he's working with. And, stop. <laughs> and, then, and he gets his baby mama, he gets them two in the same room. And he it's a gives he dual gives, proposition. Yeah, dual he proposal. gives his fiance, I mean his girlfriend, a ring, and then he gives his baby mama a ring too at the same time. Like it just and then the, the fiance just, I mean the uh, the girlfriend just freaks that's, out, just storms out, just. It's very VH yeah. wonderful, right? It is on VH yeah. one, oh, right? It's freaking hilarious, dude. I, so I, 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 that show is just. So what's it? Is he promoting? Is, is this like the the hip hop version of indecent proposal? Uh, with Woody Harrelson, like just it's just the, he the, this guy I guess lives in his he lives in his own world of like this this fantasy of like because he's a big producer that he can have anything he wants and he chills have, with Benzino he can, yeah he can just you know become a a, a polygamist uh, uh, King Solomon type whatever <laughs> so know? he's like the war he's like the Black Warren Jeffs sort of yeah that's know. pretty much it he's pro- he's promoting. Uh, the polygamist lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's like a Mormonism uh, propaganda show or something. But yeah, it's good show. I mean, he's the only... There's really no... He is the main character slash only, like, lead yeah, character. it's the only character the show, that right? people care about on the show. Everybody else is like... Who? Isn't it the uh? show sort of about it? Well, no, it's also about Little Scrappy as well. Yeah, Little Scrappy... <laughs> um... Who's a thoughtful a and thoughtful just a cat. bunch of... Un- yeah, it's the only famous people in there are... A uh, little scrappy and Stevie J and Benzino. That's it. Benzino is just a side role. And then the though. other uh, characters are just a bunch of unknown bitches who just want to be famous by being on a reality show. Unlike everyone else who's on reality shows, right, right, who have exactly. no interest that's, in exposure. Yeah. But or that's being the famous. main element to every reality show: is uh, hot bitches who can't act but want to be famous. Uh, <laughs> <All right>. AKA <laughs> like Hollywood cinema, I would say it's about the same thing. Yeah, but what I mean is now hot bitches who can't act have a medium that they can be focused into as opposed to, you know, Hollywood movies where That's now we're, they're actually looking for hot bitches that true. can act. It used to be just porn, right? Yeah. That, oh, that oh, yeah. Chick. In the 70s, they were like, there were porn uh, theaters everywhere. Like, it was like a normal thing to go to a porn theater well, like, with, your, with your parents. The thing, too, is back then <laughs> and, and even today, it was that porn was seen as a, a way to actually break into legitimate acting. Well, it was a new thing. Porn was new it well was, it was new too but like 
they they had it seen it was raunchier it was more it was more it was it yeah. was a form of art when it first came out it was the, like yeah the yeah. idea is you get in there you do some porn and then you get a role in a hollywood movie and so yeah. on and so like it happened with like sylvester stallone i heard and michelle pfeiffer and people like that like started doing yeah. those 70s like just well, they you say know. that we've gotten as a society more obsessed with sex and i guess you could say that there's more sex in the public eye in the media like that but as far as us personally there were there was way more like polygamy and incest and shit like that back in the 60s and 70s the fucking hippies were doing way crazier well, shit than people were doing today the human brain is no more obsessed with sex than it's ever been you know biologically but now we have all this media and instant porn yeah. access and internet well, and stuff to feed it at any given media, time we have a media that tells us that like okay uh, and I don't mean that MSM. Like, that gay people are some, is some kind of a new phenomenon, you know, or some right. shit like exactly. that. Right, exactly. When, like, uh, you know, back in the 70s, like, there were people, like, having sex with animals all the time and just didn't see a problem no, I mean, with it. Gayness, <laughs> is a part, <laughs> like, gayness is a part of nature. There was gays in ancient Greece and ancient Japan and everything. There's gay animals. There's gayness in, in, in the wilderness, you know? Um but what is new is that whole is basically the gay agenda, the gay culture, the gay, the gay, the the codified gay lifestyle. You know what I mean? The in other words, the West Hollywood scene, basically. That's it's that's not new, no. but that it's not new. I'm not saying that's new, but that as like a mainstream. But what I mean is MSM it, 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 agenda. It's, it was way worse and more sexually charged and more uh, crazy and in your face. I think mm -hmm. in the 60s mm -hmm. and 70s, in late 60s, yeah. and all throughout the 70s and the 80s. Of course, Back I can't the, forget the 80s. I, nobody forgets the 80s, but, people, but not well, around like here. To say that pornography or, or that the 90s were all about sex because of Bill Clinton and all this shit. But no, the 90s is when sex went mainstream. <laughs> yeah, no one had really known you about know it what I mean? before. But that. it was way worse when it was underground, when it was in fucking clubs in the 80s. Well, you and know shit. this. Like back... People were having sex inside of nightclubs. Did well, you know that, kids? Damn it. In the Learn history. In the turlet, in the bathroom, at the club, yeah. you'd be fucking. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean, you've seen it. We've seen it like in New York City, the capital of the world, in Times Square, the middle of the city. They, it used to be all porn theaters and sex shows yeah. back in the 70s and them taxi driver days. And now it's just corporate. It's all fucking yeah. like, you know, like, Giuliani you know, cleaned movie, it up. Taxi driver, he goes into the mm -hmm. porn theater and there's like the whole theater is full. There's like a line outside and everything. Well, no, That's how it was. There was tons of theaters it like was, that. Pe but now people are more ashamed. I guess, I don't think that we've gotten more sexualized. I think we've gotten more afraid of sex as a society because well, now it, we're, we're hiding... And we're only looking at porn on the internet where we know that no one can, right. except for the NSA, True. find out what we're looking at. You're right. It's not a public sex show anymore. Yeah. It's all, like, relegated to yeah. your little personal Instagram uh, yeah, corner. We're never... I mean, we not in our lifetimes, at least, have I ever seen events like, um, um, you know, what was that one in the 60s? Uh, 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 Woodstock? Woodstock, yeah. <laughs> that one. With people rolling around naked in the fucking mud. And shit. Oh, it know? happened at Woodstock '94 and '99. It just wasn't as peaceful. No, I, it, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't as it, like sexually charged as it was a bit in the '70s and shit. It was more about violence and just chaos and anarchy right. and shit. And the, the other part is it's a balanced thing. Like as the uh, as the um, you know availability of porn and all this increases, so does um, you know religious fundamentalism and more yeah. moralizing and shit well, like so they'll fight that you sent me this thing about uh how every 11 years there's a solar cycle i sent uh, that to you yeah it was about it, the, the the title of the video was something like the sun is about to like uh Go switch on. polar oh right Ma right. yeah it yeah. was sun was to change magnetic yeah, poles magnetic yeah poles. yeah and so right, i right. watched the video and basically yeah. it said that this happens every 11 years apparently. yeah it's 11 year cycle and, 11. and if you think about it every 11 years there is sort of a Okay, there, when there's an increase in solar activity, there's mm -hmm. an increase in mass, just yes. insanity in human behavior. Ah, you know what I mean? I thought that was the moon, Throughout not the, the sun. World. No, I the, it was the, the sun full and moon. the moon both have. Yeah, the that. full moon we know the makes full moon people does that. actual yeah. crazy. Because yeah. the full moon reflects light from the sun. Exactly. So it's being yeah. a conductor for solar energy. Mm -hmm. So that's the point. The sun, you know, the, when we have all this solar activity, we see more war, we see more death, we see more yeah. destruction, more corruption, more, you know, perversion and rape and all this yeah. crazy shit. It, and then when that cycle is over, then it, it, it goes back to like when there's less, a lot less solar activity. And then it just 
you know, uh, 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 winds up, and then every 11 years, you see the, this mass solar activity, and then it stops, and then 11 years later, again and again. So we have an 11-year cycle well, in which, human nature, huh? where like... We're always at war, and then we're always at peace. Then we're always at war, then we're always at peace. We keep well, going around what, and around. What part of the cycle are we in now? Because this just got me to thinking, we had 2001, we had 9-11 in 2001, and what's 11 years after we're that? At 2012. End, we're at the end now we're, of yeah. that cycle. We're at, we're now we're at the end. end of that 11-year cycle. Right now. So yeah. if the sun is at peak activity, yeah. basically, in 2013. Yeah, so something, AKA, something big's going to happen, mass awakening. It's going to be a calm. The economy's going to come back up maybe a little bit, and so, then it's going to come back down. So in 2014, in and, years. so in 2014, so leading up to the next election, we're going to see people calm down? Is that what you're saying? Well, I've seen the same shit. They're, they they show, like, graphs of, like, the economy going up and down and up and down, and there there seems to be some kind of, like, a 10-year cycle or 10 or 11-year Sure, year boom cycle. and bust and shit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it, it, there's, there's something to that. And there, it's it's to me. I've always known for a while that hotter places in the world uh, have tend to have more violence. You know well, what that's I'm saying? because it irritates people, and they get they have a yeah. shorter fuse. Exactly. But the other thing is to admit it's if eleven is the magical number, it's like the ultimate number of like yeah. Aleister Crowley and shit. The, yeah, and like, eleven. Yeah, it's the most important Illuminati. As number. it just geek became eleven eleven on our uh, timesheet read, uh, you know, oh, time wow. clock for the show. Good. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just if that's really it, yeah, that makes perfect sense. If it's a sun cycle, like if you master that, you basically master like you know humanity yeah. or whatever you, the whole natural well, yeah. I mean, if you, evolution. If you study the way that weather and there's cosmic energy, and because weather is basically a result of cosmic energy, all weather on Earth is related to like solar activity and shit. It's hot and cold fronts. Yeah, yeah put exactly. up a hot and cold front. If it son. wasn't because if if it wasn't for what people dread as being global warming then we wouldn't have something called global cooling you know what i'm saying so these things it's these are things thing. that we need you know what i yeah. mean the sun does melt a little bit of the ice just so we so it can bring down some cold air to protect us from from this increased solar activity that we're going to be we experiencing get, well yeah i mean it's some internal shit uh where are the penis is at we talked about those. oh we haven't <laughs> touched on wiener <laughs> you've touched on some wiener but uh Recently, but no, I'm kidding. But we haven't uh, touched on Wiener in our last two shows, and that's I will. It's news. a delay, yeah, but it's a, it's just we know it's the distraction. Plus, it's like, what do we add to it? We know he's uh, but he's like a perfect topic for our show. That's let's get there. Like, all right, let's. What get about to the Wiener. mayor of San Diego who was supposedly like grabbing oh, booties okay. and stuff? <laughs> his name's Filner. <laughs> no, but his name his name's Filner. I'm okay. filling her. <laughs> filling her. I'm filling her up. Uh, Filner, hmm. Wiener, hey, Wiener, Filner, Filner, Wiener, yeah, Filner, Wiener, <laughs> get I'm it out, that's some tratty type that's shit, shit. alright, yeah, but, but, but yeah, so Wiener's big, he's been in the news, uh, <laughs> he's <laughs> on thing- the rise and now he's falling again. <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, yeah he's, he's shrinking a, again. Well, I mean, the whole deal is that... His he, pole he, is shrinking. Yeah, the whole deal is that he's behind in the mayoral race and... Um, that's, <laughs> he's you behind know, the mayoral race. And, oh, well, man. no, but it's just the chick. He's going to get beaten by a chick, which is what he wanted in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I, his wiener, I, ironically. Wiener gets beaten by yeah, a bitch. Wiener, <laughs> wiener gets slapped around by a powerful woman. Uh, yeah, I forgot her name, whatever. It's Quinn or something, like... The, uh, the chick who apparently is most likely to be mayor, which makes sense with this whole rise of women and, oh, now a woman's the mayor of New York. Oh, now look, a woman's the president of the United States. Uh, yeah, Hillary, it's to get the, uh, and that's why the All Clintons right. haven't gotten, uh, tr- have kept very silent and not trying to defend Wiener, the whiner. <laughs> you know, I, you yeah. know, Wiener, it's like I want him to win. I, I, he, you know, he's you know, probably not going to. Like, it seems like all the establishment forces seem to you know, go against him now. You know what I noticed about the Ween and seeing him recently? Uh, he um, he looks a little bit different than he used to. Like his hair's a little bit longer. It's he's not quite as like yeah. c- combed back and shit. He, he dresses yeah, he a little looks more like he's casually. Lost it a little bit, yeah. Yeah, like he's not. Ba- he's if you look at him arms. from a, if you look at him from the time well, of the I mean, first scandal, everybody's qu- jumping ship. Like his. Uh, well, his, he's just he's. Me- he's like his campaign managers, up. you know, uh, quit and everything. So he's running his own campaign now. He's, yeah, like basically, he's he like, looks. He's got nothing left. Like he's, he looks he's like done. there's shit. Like yeah, he's just being affected he's, from all sides. Like he's if, trying to be Ron Paul at the end. Uh, I don't know. In there. I, we can still win. <laughs> oh yeah, like now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I see Justin Amash is on. Like they're interviewing him on on FNC and shit. Now he's like he really is uh, putting himself he's out there. Up, yeah, he's, he's like Snowden is a whistleblower for sure. Uh, yeah, full, it's a big divide. 
Okay, let's talk about real shit. Fuck all that penis uh, silliness. Uh, yeah. So there's a massive worldwide terror threat, apparently. Oh, and, yeah, like, yeah. Everything's they getting fucked up. All the embassies, and yeah, it's a, it's a huge non-existent threat that we don't know where it's coming Isn't from. Isn't it 22 embassies? Yeah, they, yeah, they shut 11, 22 at least. 11 times 2, 22. Yeah, deuce, interesting. Deuce. Yeah. Uh, two twos, which is 22, yep. uh, the Roman numeral twos twice. Roman numerals two is eleven. The Roman numeral two, well, one one. The Roman Roman one, numeral that's two true. is like second. Is one one right? All right anyway, is <laughs> I I. Um, that's what's up. <coughs> well, we're numerologists, or and is it gynecologists? The twin towers, yeah. All right, well, yeah. you guys know this. We're gynecologists. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, so yes, yeah, so they closed. Yeah, they ordered all um, American citizens out of Yemen, which. Uh, by the way, Yemen... Which we've been bombing since the beginning of the Obama administration, but for some reason we never declared war or, like, had an official oh, we legal bom- declaration of being there in the first place. But no, you know, we're it's not all at good. war with Yemen. We know it's we've not... We've just been like- bombing them for five years. No, but that's how it works now. It's not about war. War is when two sides... Two supposedly even match sides battle yeah. it out over something. These aren't exactly. Wars. This is not war. This it's is a just bombing. Like, it's a campaign. This like, is just destruction. It's a bombing campaign. That's what they call it a campaign. Like yeah. you know, they call presidential collateral damage. That's what they call it. That's it's all just it is. like Iraq and everything was no war either. None of these shits are wars. Afghanistan. No, Iraq and all had that. a declaration of war. No, we didn't. We haven't had that since World War Two. No, we had. We didn't have a congressional declaration of war, but with the president. Actually, you know, said we were we are able. Well, that's a PO, a presidential yeah. order. <laughs> yeah. By the way, speaking of president, apparently uh, Bush um, W had like a a pretty serious heart thing recently. Did you hear about this? It was basically a common procedure. I think my dad's actually had it where they put a stint. It's called a stint in your heart when there's blocked arteries and shit. But yeah, yeah like it, apparently it just happened to, to El Bush bro, El Bush yeah. bro. Oh, Afghanistan had a declaration of war too, I believe. None of these shits are declared in the way, like, fucking, um... Yeah, but the c- Congress got to vote on it. So, that's a declaration of They war. voted to give El Bushbo Yeah, so I think Afghanistan, it. Afghanistan it was, has probably been the only declaration... It was an author... No, it was, was an authorization... Yeah. But that's because 9 11 happened. It was an authorization of military action. You see, it's all about legal language. It's right, not right, a right, declaration right. of war. Exactly. Yeah, they don't call it war anymore, they call it liberation. Yeah, they That's call the new language. We haven't heard that word "war" since well, it's the war two thousand and eight. Really? No, because <laughs> it's part of the um, it's all corporate. The umbrella corporation is the war on terror. That's what all the subsidiaries fall under, like the police action in Iraq. You yeah. know, the we're um, not Halliburton yet, shit. Yeah, we're not at war. We're That's just war part of the greater. War. No, but we're it's part of war. the greater war on terror. They get authorized to bomb yeah. and drone. Yeah, same we're thing. Not, we're not but, in Libya. We're definitely not in Syria. No, they don't say. They don't say we're not there. They don't. They, we're not there under a war pretense. We're not. We don't have boots on the ground. We don't have tanks on the ground. You know, we just have, we have fly money on the ground. We have well, yeah. We have people that we don't have to see. We don't have to to be at war. A, a real war is by definition of war. Like we don't need to send soldiers there. We can well, send drones there. We can send money there. We can pay. Al Qaeda rebels to take over Syria for us, which is what we're doing right now, <laughs> by the way, people. So we don't need to like because Americans only think we're at war if we're actually sending troops there. But if we're just bombing other countries with drones and there's no American casualties, then we don't feel the pain, and therefore we don't understand that we're at war when you know because only we have massive war. people are dying on their side, but none on our side. Well, it's because to fight a true war now, like a World War Two style war, it's not really possible. The shit's too powerful. Like all of our well, weapons and bombs and everything. You say you said that it has to be between two even well, matched you know, forces. You get but it. it is. Russia is backing every every opponent that we've had in all these wars. Well, then then we're in the Cold War Three. So yeah. World War Three is Cold War Two. Yeah, sort of, something Russia's like that. Russia's been behind these guys the whole well, time. Well, really, know? there's never been a cessation of the Cold War. That's just what we're ended. made to the think. The Cold War never really because ended. Because Russia's Bur- always been behind every enemy that we've had to fight since the Cold War yeah, started. Yeah, fools be talking about the Berlin Wall, and that's the day that, like, the Cold War slash communism ended. But why? Why? Just because they said that? Like, is that literally how yeah. things end just Sorry, like we're that? we're not bought off by Vladimir Putin. Uh, we got to no. speak the truth here on this show. We're going to yep. tell you like it is. We are at war with Russia. We never... That war never ended. Yo, this is RT. We have been at war with them for a long time, but it's a peaceable war. It's a war, the kind of war where the two presidents could still meet and have 
you know, and joke, have drinks, and have drinks, <laughs> while the rest of us are paying for basically destruction and murder overseas. You know what I mean? Uh, the American people are paying to kill people that are being paid to kill people <laughs> by the Russians. So it's just it's 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 a game of chess, basically. It's like Amer- it's like Professor X and Magneto no playing chess. chess you know what I mean? It's it's a uh, it's the um, America. It's Obama on one side playing chess with Putin, and we're the chess pieces, or our money is the chess pieces, or you know, a Turkish rebels on one side and uh, you know Iranians on the other. But who's you putting I mean? on the the game, the tournament itself? That's the ideal. That's the big deal. Yemen. Yeah, uh, there's real shit. So Yemen. What, that's yeah, what, Yemen. Yeah, that's what we've been bombing. Yemen. And by the way, Yemen used to be known as Sanaa, and if you took the S and put it in front of, replaced it with the Y. It would be semen. It's very, clo- <laughs> it's very close to semen, is what I'm saying. That country, or whatever. It is. Radio. Hey now, <laughs> yeah. separating separating ourselves from the fucking over serious uh, truthites, which right. is pretty much everyone. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, There's we got we gotta find f- ways to, to make light of this and well, don't sit on the brownie. Yes, yeah, sorry, and, bro. And, and, and you know, try to find humor in all this. You know, even though it's it's just sad. That we're doing this, we're not there. We're not seeing pictures. Like if we were looking at pictures of dead Yemenese kids right now, we probably would be making jokes. But no, know, I mean we're not there. Like it's just the point I'm making. We well, Americans do not feel the pain because we're not sending troops there. We're sending drones and paying other uh, paying Arabs to just kill each other. Instead of having to send white people to kill Arabs, we just pay them to kill each other. Oh, that's real talk. Yeah, because people can't. And I was talking with my friend recently and he made a good point where he said uh, the reason people are like unhappy, all these like fucking people in the rich world and everything, why we're not happy and fulfilled and all this bullshit, personal therapy, is because the rest of the world is fucked up because fucked up shit is happening everywhere else. And even if we don't pay attention to it necessarily, it affects our you know, subconscious, whatever, the collective mind, all that shit. And yeah, you know? I, I, I kind of try to stay away from collectivism. And no, no. I said, when I said send the white people, I was just, you know, paraphrasing something. I don't mm-hmm. mean that they only send white people there because obviously they don't. But what I meant is that they send, they will send the darker skinned people at the, in the front line. They did it in World War II. Uh, most of the soldiers, American soldiers that died in World War II were black because they sent all the black people on the front line to die first to do all the fighting. And then the white people would just march onto the scene like, yeah, look at the job we did. Good job. And even in, in that World War II era? <laughs> yeah. In that Come on, era that was shit? the most racist era of, a, of, you know, recent American history that people can still, alive today, can still remember. I mean, we had Japanese in internment camps. We were mm-hmm. doing pretty much the same thing Hitler was doing right here in America. You know what I mean? Putting Japs in, sorry, Japanese people mm. in camps. We were well, putting... Well, uh, that. We were putting, uh, 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 I mean, of course, black people, you know, under Jim Crow, suffering under Jim Crow and, and shit like that. So, I mean, we had our own Holocaust going on here, you know what I mean? Like, so. Right, right. But it's like, it's more, you know, it's to the point. It's not like people act like, all, you know, all, there's no problems anymore or some shit. Or they act like people don't still suffer, you know. Every human being feels pain. We all go through uh, pains and the death process and, you know, have bad shit happen and you know just have to deal with shit like deal with real life like everyone has to it doesn't matter who you are you could be the most sheltered person in the world grow up in the suburbs you still got to deal with life you know like with a capital l so it's all it becomes a common thing but that's why but we don't have to the problem is that we're we're expanding that like we're pushing it further than it has to be with all these wars and shit you know like because fools behind these wars they really do believe you have to kill off like a certain amount of people like, oh, yeah. consistently to it's keep a, it's, yeah it's a you know what i'm saying belief it's 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 that you know that elitist mentality of like we have to consolidate all the wealth and kill off all the poor because they're you know taking mm-hmm. up all of this wealth and they don't, they're not doing what we want to do with it which is like you know go to space and, and invade mars or some shit i don't know whatever the right. fuck they're trying to do with see with yeah. all that money because invade Build space like and a mars. huge spaceship and like kill, yeah elysium you know, type shit do some kind of like a, a alien invasion and kill off right. all the blacks or something like that book said yeah yeah like obama's mentor's yeah, novel yeah. is all about yeah i mean that's why you know we try to bring humor that's the whole point like shit's serious out there you know when people if you want to diss us for like making fun of shit i mean that's how you level it out like because like, you know, 
Um, we're 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 all about irony here. Laughs right? laughs are good. They say laughter is the best medicine, and I realize that now because like you can just drown in all this like negative shit out there. It's so easy. Like it actually takes work Man. to maintain. You know what I'm saying? To well, maintain. Yeah, we can't your deliver. Shit. You know, you guys, the world, <laughs> you you, know, you people, planet Earth. We can't deliver you this tragic and sad. You know, pathetic, <laughs> synthetic. Yeah, you know, right. P- <laughs> information. Yeah, you know, without you know lacing it with some humor, so you guys can actually feel it and understand it the way we do, because we see the humor in it. You know, we see like the the jokes, the little inside jokes. They, mm-hmm. they do this on purpose. You know what I mean? Like we're not we're not the ones trying to be funny. They're the ones trying to be funny. We're just pointing it out. Well, yeah. I mean, the they jo- got Wiener. They got Santorum. They got just these characters, Dick Cheney. I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on. Like, that- how could we not make fun of this shit? Absolutely, absolutely. It's you know, and that's the reason why on the news they switch between these stories and shit. You yeah. know, they'll show you Wiener, then they'll show you like the, the school shooting or whatever, like the latest <laughs> fucked up shit. You know, because yeah, yeah, the news yeah. is a constant. Like you, it's like a show. The news is like watching a TV show that you can't tell if it's a comedy or a horror movie. Especially local news. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. true. It's, it's like, like one minute you'll have the funniest story, like Wiener, ah, <laughs> and the next next story is like, oh, a guy just shot a bunch of kids. Damn. Right. And then you have some you know, Ting Wong going on and yeah, shit. Holy fuck. George Zimmerman and all that crazy shit. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's some weird, like, whack, fucking wax like uh, comedy, fucking bizarro world, comedic, yeah. tragic thing. But that's, mean, life, that's life, yeah, bro. Life, yeah, life is. If there was a movie made about life. It would be by and, Monty Python. And maybe there's probably is a movie called Life. Well, yeah, there is with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. Is it Lawrence. based on the board game Life? No, it's so. based on like them too. Like they go to prison for life and they're oh, homies. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They're all I old saw at that. the that end. That was hilarious. I, oh, I it's good? It's Bernie a, Mac is in it. Rest so it's, in yeah, peace. it's a comedy about doing life in prison, yeah. basically. With, but, <laughs> with so that maybe that's what <laughs> life, but that's what I'm saying. It would be, it's a, life it's got it's comedy and it's tragedy and that movie Life that you just mentioned has them both does have both right I haven't seen it but yeah so yeah there you go you know yeah Yeah. life has its ups and down we're here to bring you up and down no not even down (laughs) we're like we're we're on that speed ball shit you know like cocaine and heroin we spit you out the side you're not gonna go up or down you're gonna yeah. be like pressed like a grape into some some wine and shit. But yeah, I me like it's we're not like trying to be negative and scare people. You know, we're not fear mongers. No, like but, you can hear, dude. There are so many channels yeah. and whatnot you can hear out there with just people delivering you like the hard news, you know, and fucking like yeah, we're not just, yeah. Go yeah. listen to Jeff Rents if you want depressing, oh, yeah. boring shit. No, but that's know? entertaining because you're just like yeah, that negative shit. Like it's it is it's good. He's like yep. He's like yep. There's no hope. Like, yeah. the, 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 the youth, all the youth are fucking the, the Zionists. They have total control. They have total control. Am I, we can do about am it. I right here? Yeah, he's like, they own <laughs> We're everything. Very calm, like, really calm. They like, own and control. They own and absolutely, control absolutely everything. Gerald Salente, what do you think? <laughs> That's right. The white shoe boys, they got the economy <laughs> under wraps. Yeah, so basically, we're trying to, you know, bring a little optimism in the game. You know, a yep. little humor, a little, uh, you know, just don't take all this shit so seriously, guys. Like, I Gentlemen. know sometimes the shit we tell you guys is scary, but don't be scared. That's what they want you to do. They want you to be scared. Be other, vigilant. And the other thing, too, is I'm sure we both know, uh, Scott and John, this well. When you go, yeah, when you get too serious with it and go too deep, even, you could say, then, yeah, you start frightening people around you or you start alienating yeah. Other people in your life because it's like you don't, it's like that's the only thing you care about. So you got to modulate it. You oh, got to yeah. be on that, like, dude, I nor- used to be that guy. Yeah, you were that guy, bullhorning ass fool, right? Yeah, I used yeah. to, yeah. When I was into the Alex Jones shit and like going around passing flyers and passing yeah. out Alex Jones DVDs and shit, <laughs> you know, buying Alex Jones DVDs just so I could pass them around yeah, and shit, like just a total asshole and losing friends in the process and, and, getting so much into, you know, political issues that my friends just think I'm a total fucking loser or nerd and have no life and not have any personal life, life at right. all, you know, because you, it becomes your life after a while. Yeah. All these concerns about everything that's going on in the world just drives you nuts. So you have to, yeah. you have to find sanity and, you know, still have your personal life and still have, you know, you know, 
deal with your issues. About deal the with balance. your problems. Don't run away. Don't ignore them. Don't escape right. into dwelling on the, uh, the the problems of the rest of the world. Yeah, that's you know a I mean? powerful message yeah. from Montana Jr. Exactly. Think because, about your yeah. own problems because if, if every person in the world could focus on their own problems, then there wouldn't be any more problems with That's it. true. There only starts, you have to clean up yourself. You have to work on yourself before yeah. you can work on other Stop shit. That's trying why to change the world. It's not going to happen. Not gonna, not gonna, not gonna happen. Nigga, 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 nigga. You know no, I mean, I, mean? I think I don't. I won't even say. Change yourself. That's the yeah. only way the world's gonna change. Change yourselves. Right. Save yourself. Because you see a lot too in these people that are involved in this political discourse out there, like people that go on the news and talk shows and yeah. talking heads and stuff. It, it's this. It's what we're talking about. They're so concerned, yeah. quote unquote, with their with the problems of the world and that's all they talk about as if like they're taking the burden on their shoulders you know all this presidential shit like I think you know school lunches should be like this and it's all just opinions and you trying to get out of yourself and yeah I think like you're saying frequently involves running from your problems that's why these fools have so many problems in the government and in congress and all that shit because they're only focused on everyone else what you reading reading uh, my I was shit I trying to see because uh, I, I think I um, mentioned some uh some news that I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, um, should I talk about what the uh, never uh, meeting uh, this actress yesterday? Okay, I don't know. Uh, I do, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Talk I? about it. Talk about it. Tell us the Hollywood tales from John Montana okay, Junior. Yeah. So I I went to um, this like little kickback yesterday. I did. It was in, in Beverly Hills. We were driving up there. I didn't know me and my friend. Oh, I didn't know. You mean you mean Austin City Limits, right? <laughs> yeah, that's where it was. Yeah, okay, no, it was no, in Beverly Hills. Yeah, it was in Beverly Hills because we're in town for the Kokesh thing. Right? right, right, exactly. And uh, so I go up there, and um, I didn't know whose house this was. This was a huge mansion, and uh, we're there, like you know, there's like some girls there. We're drinking beer, we're smoking, and uh, all of a sudden comes in Misha Barton, the actress, and I'm like, wow, oh, she's, see, she's freaking beautiful. Like she's uh, she looks good. She gained a little bit of weight. She's not like this crack whore that she used to be. Um, I well mean, yeah, because I, 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 you know, some bitches say, oh, oh, she's fat now. Look at her. She's fat. Well, no, she's just not anorexic. And I think women a lot of times uh, think that uh, skinny is beautiful. And I totally disagree. I, I like some meat on the bone. I like some thick. I like them thick, juicy apple bottom, you know. With the boots and the furs. Yeah. Um, so Okay, tell us more about the... Uh... So, yeah, she was looking good. And uh, she was really cool, you know. She drank with us and everything. She was nice and... Uh, that's she about cool. it. <laughs> you, won't, you won't reveal details about your other friends or what no, was no. Going on. I'm not you gonna. Say you played yeah. a lot of board games. Yeah, we played some board games and shit like that. We played like no. some uh, like guessing games. You know, like game where like you put like a little card on your oh, head and and, right. and and people ask you, uh, or uh, uh, you ask people questions about who, what you might be, but you can't ask people what you are. I'm just, yeah, it's like you know. So yeah, sure. Uh, so do you hear that, kids out there? If you start a truther radio show. An alt media YouTube audio show. You too can party with Hollywood starlets at their Beverly Hills mansion. Oh yeah! Sometimes. Every time I come out to LA, like I run into <laughs> celebrities all the freaking time. It's it's amazing. Like I have seen so many celebrities multiple time over and over. Like Larry O'Donnell. Yeah, I've seen Larry O'Donnell. I've seen uh, Keep um, the Peace with Arnold Dermot Schwarzenegger. Yeah. I've seen uh, Arnie Owen on the Co- Wilson. Yeah. Anyone who's in LA a lot, keep it on Pro Tools. Uh. No, no, don't worry. I'm just I'm anyone. Something anyone who's in LA a lot, you walk around, you see a lot of celebs. When you, when you walk around New York, you see even more celebs. But they're people you got to pick out of the crowd. Yeah, New York is so like crowded, that. you can't really. see No, but you can yeah. tell. You know, I, I mean, I can I tell because I, I I've seen. Out. Wait, I lived in New York and in LA. I've I, seen I have, way so more celebrities in LA than in New York. No, way the, more. Pound I for see pound, them at the beach. I yeah. see them at the promenade. I've seen them. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, yeah, at but you parties, ain't been back to at restaurants. You know, it's just everywhere. New York, I've I've only met like maybe one celebrity. In yeah, but it was how like long, a rapper. dude? If you walk New York, D. if you Rest walk New York piece. enough, you if you have the eye, you'll see mad celebrities. In here, they're probably more recognizable because all the biggest have to be in L.A. Man. Like you know, for the they just do. But you get it. But yeah, you see them all everywhere, even in like Seoul, Korea. You know, uh, I saw Kobe in freaking oh, Spain. Have you heard about this story? Um, they are there's an RFID program for Lollapalooza. Lollapalooza goers that they can 
volunteer to get the chip implanted at Lollapalooza. Well, all this, I mean, what I've discovered, and this is a big thing for you IJSers out there. Uh, this is a, uh, yeah, because theory. Our, this is a big watershed. To these yeah, kind of yes. events. This is a watershed thing. I have realized that the true NWO is all these concerts and festivals and hippie gatherings, much like Lollapalooza. That was kind of like the godfather to it because it just did. Like I remember, it was it Woodstock '99 where they were charging like twenty dollars for bottles of water and shit. You know, it's like police state prices and stuff now they have RFID chips and Lollapalooza and it seems like it's this way to promote collectivism like on an epic level it's all these sort of music fans and yeah. individualists and it's a way to get them all together yeah. and it's, right? it's a bunch of kids you know dressed up in like ripped up clothes but yet they're paying like a hundred dollars to get in and shit yeah or and, more or two, yeah well, sometimes three hundred dollars to get in and shit yeah, and, you like know, these kids have rich parents, but they dress up like they're homeless. They're trustafarians. They're trustafar. A lot of them, but yeah, like Burning Man costs like four hundred bucks to go. Plus, you need a bunch of shit to have there. You have to like drive up with an RV or something, yeah. um, and it lasts nine days. So it's yeah. someone who could take nine days off from life, from like work and everything. Yeah, with, like, like just, no food, no yeah. water. You know, I mean, no, I mean and they you have, have to it. buy the expensive ass food and water there. They're getting us ready for the future, basically. Right, right. That's they're what getting it, us the ready for right. Like, the horrible economy where we'll have to pay uh, like up the ass for everything right and just everybody's dressed like like just bums and shit like that yeah these you ultimate know? like communes like, see, where everything's the new, free the new, uh, like white kid culture is like to dress up like a bum dress up I, like a well it's more just yeah, the, the like whole global rich culture white kids dressing up like bums the like that's like that's cool. Well, I know like that's a punk part of it. Rocker thing, yeah. No, but that's I mean, yeah, that's all part of it. But it's really just people gather. I mean, how many festivals? It's still the summertime right now. How many festivals and concerts and all this stuff? And it's great. I love it. I love music. I think people should go and experience all that's that like, shit. But yeah, it's like that is the youth culture now. It's like going to yeah. these crazy. It's just trying to party. Like, like celebrities are pushing mass this too. Thing. Like you see, how there's a lot more celebrities getting caught. Like. At parties and doing drugs and drinking and well, that's and, uh, old hat. I, well, yeah, I'm talking yeah, about mass I'm gatherings. Is you see yeah. celebrities dressed like trash now when they go out in public, like a lot more. Like I've seen Britney Spears in L.A. like dressed like a homeless person. I've seen Jack Nicholson dressed like a homeless person. Like I've seen people, uh, celebrities underdress. Or, like well, they like because maybe that's their disguise. It's their like it's their like their Bruce Wayne. You know their. Uh, or it's their crisis hide. acting, or it's just another person looks like them, or yeah, it's their it's doppelganger. Their it's their mask. Everyone wears a mask. We all wear a mask. This That's radio the... show is our mask. Think about it. Well, yeah, it's, it's just... We, people can't see our faces, so we can say whatever the fuck we want without worrying about, like, oh, uh, you know... Uh, you ugly I saw pricks. you on YouTube saying something I don't agree with, bro. Or some shit like that. Yeah, well, we want to keep it mellow, so to speak, like yeah, that. Uh, mellow. That's right. Ourselves. That's, a clear, that's a good word, mellow. I, I, Sure. Yeah. So, um, oh yeah. Uh, and from Mello to, did we discuss uh, Michael Hastings' widow on the show? Oh yeah, Michael Just Hastings' wind, window, widow um, was on Pierce Morgan last night looking sexy as fuck. And, and her name's something, I can't, we can look it up, but yeah. Something, it's something Jordan. <laughs> no, yeah. It's some, but, yeah, 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 she's the widow. It's like uh, something. Jo her last name is Jordan. Something Jordan. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting name too. Yeah. Um, and uh, I always thought Jordan is kind of a gay name. Like. <laughs> you can go that route. <laughs> it, it's only gay when it's a first name. When it's a last name, it's acceptable. I don't know Michael anyone. Jordan. I don't know anyone with that. <laughs> yeah, with that. No, I know. I know some girls named Jordan. I know a couple. There girls are a lot of girls with that. I don't name, know any yeah. guys named Jordan, but I know no, a couple no, girls named Jordan. Don't. Yeah, it's like <laughs> none of your collaborators or anything no, like that. No. Yeah, um, Jordan Sparks with a, with an eye, yeah. singer chick. Anyways, so Michael, this is a serious story though. Yeah, she's basically uh, she came on so, Pierce Morgan's show looking hot and sexy and very happy and smiley, like she just won the lottery or something. Yeah, people were yeah. you know saying she didn't show emotion and whatnot. She did, yeah, and she didn't look sad. Yeah, at all. she didn't give any credence to any sort of uh, conspiracy yeah, theory. Yeah, she's very smiley, which is usually serious interviews about people that just died recently. Like people are very somber and they can't really smile. Like their whole face is like completely void of like emotion and it's just like they're staring into the air like you know and she was just very smiley and happy and just like she's just happy to be on pierce morgan show you know no but she has a deep government background and she has also appeared i know because i've seen the screenshots on the show red eye at least once 
Hmm. So she's been on TV before. She's not a stranger to any of so She's you, a are, media personality. So are you basically implying that she may have been married to Michael Hastings for the purposes of maybe uh, spying on him? Well, I'm not, tabs on him, I'm not implying that we discussed that before the show, but not even implying just that it's an Because this is the first connection. time I ever, I've ever heard this theory. I know. But uh, no, it's an interesting... I mean, it's that whole thing. It's that... Strange bedfellows, literally in this case, Michael Hastings being the dude who gets all the fucking scoop reporter stuff, which is sub- anti-establishment. Yeah. His wife is a part of the fucking establishment, and she uh, uh, is the last person that he talked to right before he died, like a few minutes before his car. I thought it was some Wiki lawyer. Oh yeah, no, he talked to WikiLeaks's lawyers too, which is very suspe- suspicious. Also, these guys are like very cultish looking and shit. Right. Julian Assange and them, and. Uh, and also, yeah, his his wife was one of the last people he talked. He sent. Remember, he sent her a text saying, "Oh, I I got a uh, I got a uh, something the uh, radar. I got to drop out of the radar, or something." Oh uh, yeah, he's like, "I got to drop off the radar." And then DARPA used his radar to blow up his fucking yeah. car or whatever, yeah. make it well, crash. Well, that's the theory, yeah, or something. But you know, she the first question that Pierce Morgan asked her was. Uh, do you think there was? A, do you buy into any of the conspiracy theories about your husband's death? And she's like. Oh no! It was it was obviously an accident, and I have no reason to believe that it was anything but an accident. And I'm like, are you kidding? His car freaking blew up. Witnesses saw that shit, just a huge explosion. Yeah, Mercedes Benz issued a statement that said our cars do not blow up like that. They because of their reputation and that it's true. Yeah, they have to they have to say something if it's one of their cars that just doesn't do that. It wasn't a freaking Japanese car. Sorry, Japs. <laughs> Once again, again, I'm and sorry. sorry for the internment also. <laughs> But yeah, now, sorry for the internment. That but, was now you, up. But, but now you're getting your revenge by building cars that just fucking kill people and plow through the boardwalk. Thank you for that, by the way. Oh, what was that? Uh, it was just some Toyota plowing through. But yeah, let's cover that story. Oh, yeah. Uh, was it a Toyota? I don't remember. I have to find out. But it was a Toyota. Uh, there was a few years ago where uh, it was during the whole uh, Cash for Clunker th- program was going. And there yeah, was yeah. a lot of incidents with Cash for Clunker cars that were just like, you know... Brakes weren't working, and there were accidents and all that. And yet, these well, were yeah, all, of course they were all Toyotas. Of course, we remember that. But um, yeah, I mean, if we can't, like I said this before on the show, if we can't trust Asians to <laughs> drive our cars, then why do we trust them to make our cars uh, no, and they, our planes too? You mean Asiana, Asiana? Airline? Well, no, it, it's that. <laughs> Sorry, I just have to say that. I'm not trying to be racist. The question, I'm just saying, like, the, I'm sure there's a lot of Asian people that can drive. The question is not in the engineering, in their engineering skills. Like, yeah, just because they're n- known for not being good drivers, yeah, it doesn't mean you can't build shit. Life is yeah. like that way a lot. And it's you- not its not something that's racist to say that Asians uh, are not always good drivers because it's true. It's just like saying that black people like chicken. It's not its not a bad thing. <laughs> Genetically like, is, predisposed to like... There's nothing wrong with like- liking chicken. It's not a bad thing. Well, no, I was actually bad about you. I was discussing this with my Asian friend, and even though he was raised by white parents, adopted, he still loves this like Korean uh, tofu stuff that we have. I love it too, but he's like, dude, am I genetically predisposed to like this shit? Even though I didn't like grow up with it, I'm like, yeah, you are. Just like, yeah, yeah. sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say the two biggest crops in the world are corn and soy. Tofu equals soy. Corn for the white people and soy for the Asians. Wow. Well, corn for everybody else, really, and soy for the Asians, because Asians really represent like a third of, wait, more than a third of like the human population, and so basically that's the that's mm. the portion of the human population that feeds on all the soy, and then the rest feeds on all the corn, and those are the two main crops. That's why Everyone. if you look at all the ingredients and everything you buy in the supermarket and all the prepackaged shit, everything, mm-hmm. it has either two, either one of two ingredients, corn, or soy. Some Soybean sort. or corn syrup. Well, yeah, Every, the, everything. That's a dietary. Yeah. Not the necessarily. Di- there's like, they might not list it as having either one, but it might still have it in it, in trace amounts. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah like oh, yeah, I was no, at, everything like the simplest things. Like you, you know, you buy like a, a a fruit juice or something like that. And it has corn syrup in it. You know. Yeah. So there's that. So yeah, it's just like, if we're all. Yeah, we're all pre-programmed from culture to like our like cultural DNA, which you've talked about as a concept. Yeah. How like, yeah, if you're like, you might be programmed to like, 
certain food. Like I might be more dis- inclined to like Jewish deli food or whatever yeah. well, than we, someone else, even if I never had it before. McDonald's is huge in the Asian world, and guess oh, what? Yeah. They make their meat out of soybean. It's all soy. Like you said, weren't you having a Mickey D's burger recently? You're like, this is mostly soy, anyways. Yeah. And corn and soy are the most poisonous, <laughs> most poisonous, most dangerous foods that you can eat are soy and corn. But if it's you were bad. to eat, but if you were to have like real soybeans that were fresh and stuff, and you made tofu out of that, would that be okay? That would be um, fine, right? Or even grow your own corn. It's just the way that they're industrialized and they're the, and they're made and all that. That's really that's they're made into a poison, you know, by Monsanto buy these big companies you know what I mean but um incredulous but um no yeah I'm sure there's healthier alternatives you know like farmer's market and shit like that but farmer's market even is you you won't find that much corn in there because just Monsanto has taken over like all that shit the Korean tofu is delicious by the way the joints I've had but most of the tofu and most of the soy that you're gonna find out there on the market has Mm -hmm. been industrialized by the Monsantos and the you know, the superpowers. Halliburton's and shit. Yeah. Superfood. Yeah, I think Halliburton might be even connected to the soy industry too because uh, yeah. uh, Kellogg, Brown, and Root and but all you that notice, and yeah. Vietnam and all that bullshit. But you notice at the same time when there's all this bad food and shit, we have this huge craze, or at least in places like where we live, and, you know, health, like people that are like super fit and eat really good and, you know, nothing but organic vegetables and shit and just, I don't know, like, I see these people running around here, they all seem to be in shape and stuff like that, right? Well, it's because, you know, there's a farmer's market culture here in, in Santa Monica where we're staying, uh, <laughs> Just staying while at we the wait hotel. for the uh, Adam Kokesh the it, civil disobedience event where IG, we're going to crash. Yeah. IGS Studios West, basically, is where we are yes. now. And, uh, you know, so, um, yeah, the, the people here are, yeah, farmer's market-based dieters, um, well, whole, whole foods based. There are very a lot of people smoke weed here. You know, there are very people are into like very hippie type of culture and you know uh, health. Yes, yeah. you know I know if very I'm, like kind of left wing, but still libertarian. You know what I mean? People, there's a restaurant in Venice. It does get even more left wing when you go to Venice, and there's a restaurant called Mao's. There. <laughs> yeah, Mao's Kitchen. Yeah, yeah, like we've discussed. Well, there's one in Hollyweird, I believe, too. Yeah, and everybody on in, in Venice is on welfare, and just they just yeah. spend it at Mouse Kitchen. Yeah, getting some fried dumplings straight yeah, Venice, from the fucking. Yeah, Venice is a nice place, but it's like it's very you know what communistic socialist. Ma- like, yes, and Mouse Kitchen place. is delicious, by yeah. the way, which I'm sure you know. Yeah, it's really fucking good Chinese food now, which makes sense with what Andrew Breitbart said about Bill Ayers and his wife, <laughs> uh, Obama's mentor, right? Left wing mentors. Uh, he said they had like the best food yeah. um, ever. Like he had it at their house, like Him fish and, and stuff. Yeah, they cooked like the bombest meal. So maybe there's a connection between communist dictatorships and really bomb food. Although we know that most people get shit food in these actual well, societies. Yeah. The Soviet Union, like, was uh, they were killing people and putting people into meat grinders and then selling it as canned meat for people <laughs> to eat. So, you know, there was... Like, it, was not, cannibalism was huge in, so, in Soviet uh, Russia. I mean, wasn't that's Hitler... Thing. Like, have you seen the, uh, the movie Hannibal Rising? Nah. You have to see that movie. It's very good. It's all about like uh, the old uh, Soviet Russian cannibalism that was going It's sort on of a Magneto-ish that. story. Like he's involved in the... Ho- like yeah. He's in the Holocaust or something, Hannibal Lecter, or he lives around oh, yeah, there at the time. Uh, or he's in the tra- he is, camp or something. Uh, I think Russian and the East German troops are taking over Russia. And yeah, yeah. Basically, like it's they, they starve and he has to eat his... I'm not going to reveal the end of the uh, story, but... You know, it shows how he became a cannibal, basically. It Can't just, it really could be no can- yeah. cannibal rising. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what Hannibal means. It's Hannibal the cannibal. That's the point of the. That's name the being joke. Hannibal. Yeah. Because but Hannib- his real name wasn't Hannibal in real life. It was uh, what's his name? Um, Something Russian. Oh, in real life. Yeah, I think the, what, the book based- was based on like another cannibal. I forget the guy's name, but. Like one of the Ted Bundy or yeah, something? Yeah, I think it was Ted Bundy. I think it was ba- loosely based on Ted Bundy and then someone else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's not that he's an actual real character. Yeah. He's just... Cannibal's also like, you know, uh, it, 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 we always think of like cannibals are always these creepy like white guys and shit. But, you know, we all, we had black cannibals in Florida. Well, that Zulu... Uh, <laughs> well, it's that Zulu type yeah, stuff, Yeah, yeah you know, there's also the, uh, the, 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 the uh, voodoo culture of Voodoo and shit, yeah. 
you know, yeah, not to impugn. I know I'm probably being ignorant about which cultures and like are eating yeah. people and stuff, but you get my point. Yeah, in China, we illustrate. You know, they, there's cannibal cults in all over China. And they eat babies and aborted uh, fetuses in China. Foetuses. Yeah. So. Aborting the fetuses. And, I mean, the yeah, country so. that eats cats is eventually going to like the slope slippery into like eating babies. I mean, yeah, I mean, they saying I just like, you know, you're supposed to just be drinking these protein shakes with all these like superfoods and green algae yeah. like pills and well, stuff. Well, I mean, babies are full of stem cells, so maybe that's why they're eating them because it's probably rejuvenating them and shit. Whoa. You know, so maybe eating babies is the key to eternal life. That's right, IJS. <laughs> you heard, you heard, you heard, you it, heard it here last. And also, Eat yeah. Eat your babies. But we didn't make Eat that up. Eat your babies. You will stay young like John Montana. <laughs> you will. America eats its young. Uh, yeah, so what else? Are we uh, we done? We always give them an epic uh, show. I, yeah, always, I mean, we have 15 minutes. We can I always wanted more. to keep, we wanted to go to one hour, huh? Yeah, yeah, let's hit the hour. Let's hit the hour. I feel like we're making it shorter. For, I don't know if the people want shorter eps. It seems like the shorter episodes. No, episode, they like the long you know and what, hard. Yeah. You know they what like I've noticed? long and hard. You know what I've noticed? The shorter the episode, maybe not the length, but... Like, the less I work on a given episode of making the video, the more people watch it normally. It's like, yeah, I don't really put, like, a lot of yeah, description. Yeah, no, you don't need to do that. Just yeah. have a clever title. Like, sometimes right, right. you have really cool titles. Sometimes the titles are a little, yeah. you know, shitty, yeah. but <laughs> sometimes you have really good titles. Well, we like, have... Yeah. Yeah, well, we have twenty. Well, you got to aim to yeah. for the title to bring in people, but what you yeah, think's gonna you bring them in like doesn't the always bring them like, in. Title is like Tupac goes back to yeah. life or something. What's important? People will like totally like click it. You know, like so many yeah. people will click it. No, but that's like, the, proof that Tupac is alive. How many? You well, know, we're gonna get it. like a million hits. No, no, but it doesn't work like that. You could put that, and maybe like fifty extra people will see your shit, but it's not gonna go no, viral. No, so many people are gonna click on the link, and once it clicks on the link, it becomes a view automatically. No, but, no, but be able to click on the link. Your shit has to be well placed, which means it has to it has to be visible in other words like because people aren't necessarily searching for that what no, you they are all the time people are always searching for like tupac and then if they see a video that says tupac is alive we have the proof they're gonna click it you could get some extra shit but yeah. it's not gonna no, go as you, viral you wouldn't believe how many times i go on youtube and i see something that says something like tupac is alive or Gaddafi is alive or uh, uh you know uh Godzilla. well yeah Proof that aliens did 9 11 or something well, yeah. like that. And I click on it and it's like some, <laughs> some guy's like song, like about what, yeah. what in the butt or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be us soon. Well, yeah, I mean, because clearly our number one viewed video is the one about Dr. Drew, where it's titled Dr. Drew Exposed. So, and it was at the time when Dr. Drew was in the news. So it all links up like that. So, yeah, the shit well, yeah, has to be trending yeah. and topical. You know, to get those initial wave. It's about getting oh, yeah, that man, initial like, wave. Because the Dr. Drew, I mean, that, that's that's a scary dude right there. I mean, think <laughs> about it. All his, because it has more of an impact. It's not just a regular doctor. It's a guy who treats celebrities. So that has a more of an impact on pop culture because these are people that we know, think we know, and have like, you know, attachments you to or whatever. you know. You know, like the guy from Alice in Chains that was on his show and then died right after the show. Uh, Rodney King, who's a freaking civil rights legend, who pretty much you know, died right after his show. Uh, the we country singer who before. died after his show. Uh, who else died after after coming on his show? Uh, Just DJ one AM. third of the patients. Yeah, yeah. All, all his patients end up dead. You know what I mean? Like even Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson and freaking all Michael the Jackson. celebrities went to him. He was a guy who he was a celebrity doctor. You know what I mean? And this is why there's a culture of death. In the celebrity world, and and these are all drug addicts, Heath Ledger and all them shits. It's uh, they're all drug addicts, and uh, the industry, you know, is gonna take as much advantage of that. Pharmaceutical industry is gonna take advantage of that, and uh, yeah. you're right, you're right, you're right, absolutely, absolutely, bro. You've gotten it, you've gotten it. It's yeah, uh, they, I was looking they, at my they phone. They kill off these people, and a lot of times these are good people who have like information or who go against the establishment or who go against. Well, it's just the interest. People and all of a sudden they drop down. You know? Well, yeah, if your money, if you're threatening and money interests and yeah. that sort of thing. and It's just, yeah, plus there is sort of, I see how people can see it as just sort of some sort of cosmic jokery, how like the good people get yeah. killed and all these like shit people are allowed to thrive, criminals. and. Charlie Sheen actually said something about Dr. Drew that was like the realest shit. He said like, this guy, you know, <coughs> is, is a fraud. Like, you know, you can't, you can't cure 
drug addiction by putting somebody on antidepressants. You know what I mean? It just it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? The only way to quit is to quit. You know, and that's why Charlie Sheen didn't go the route of so many celebrities by going to Dr. Drew. Oh, he yeah. just decided to go cold turkey and now he's back in, you know, still Charlie Sheen, you know what I mean? He never went. People thought he was going to fall off. He was going to die. People thought he was going to, you know, everybody was saying, oh, Charlie Sheen's going to die in a few days and shit like that. No, dude. Or his career is over. No, it's 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 bigger than ever, really. You know what I mean? It's all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, well. He doesn't need Levine and all these other people. Anymore. Levine? Yeah. Who's Levine? Charles Levine or whatever the guy. No, Chuck Lorre? Chuck Lorre, yeah. A.K.A. Um, Chaim... Heim Levine. Levine. Yeah. Is that it? Is yeah, that what he doesn't he's need Heim. He doesn't need Heim. Uh, no. But is he, it Heim? Yeah. Is that and what it, it is? Even like, if you look at like Mel Gibson, like dissing the Jews was like the biggest thing that happened in his career. And, and, no, like, he became, no. Like, he, he became famous for it, but it's infamous. He became even more relevant after that. Yeah, but there's no, no such thing as bad publicity. You know what I mean? But he hasn't done stuff since then, really. Are you kidding? Like, uh, um, uh, Passion of the Christ was one of the biggest movies ever. Apocalypto did That was huge. before it. Every though. movie he's done since then is, is done pretty good. No, that was really before it. No, that was pretty much the controversy about him being anti-Semitic came out before the movie. But after, yeah, after the movie, there was the whole, like, drunken incident. And then people still went to see Ap- Apocalypto right after that incident. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, Apocalypto literally came out right after that shit. You know, so... Yeah, I mean, the guy doesn't give a shit. And I think that's Americans love, like, someone who doesn't give a shit. And also, when you attack a celebrity, it makes people like that celebrity even more. You know, like Sarah like Palin. Like we do in here. Yeah, Sarah Palin's always getting attacked here and there every every five seconds. And people love her. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you... <laughs> Zimmerman, you love her. I, I don't, you know, I like her. I don't dislike her, but I don't, like, trust her. I don't, you know, she's she's... There's a lot of things I don't like about her, too, you know? But, um, you know, it's like somebody like George Zimmerman, like he's a, he's an American icon now, you know what I mean? He's been made famous and by people attacking him and people defending him. You, you wouldn't believe how many people I talked to, you know, even people in California, even people in liberalist place in America <laughs> that defend George Zimmerman and say, oh, no, George Zimmerman got, is being treated unfairly, he's being attacked unfairly. It's because when you attack someone... You're making that person likable. You're making, you know, people come to... The Haters make like you that. famous. Haters make you famous. Haters make me famous. So yeah. is that... Yeah, that's it? Yeah, yeah so... we need more haters. Yeah. Four more minutes. Oh, is that... No, we don't have a time limit. You just Three feel... more minutes. Yeah, I feel... Uh, <laughs> you know, just feel weird, like, knee issues. I was all edibled out the other day, and I, like, was just walking through a parking lot. Yeah, and dude, turned look, around and twisted weird. my You're, knee. like, breaking down in sweat right now. No, right no, now. no, no sweat here. You on Molly or something? <laughs> Yeah, we'd be sipping lean, like, I don't know, supposedly yeah, Trayvon. Yeah, Trayvon shit. Uh, in these parts, yeah. We're like the rapper Plies or something, you know? Or Plies or whatever these cats are, you know, That's right. doing. Sipping so, lean and sucking out Mexicans and uh-huh. pussy-ass crackers. Uh-huh. Oh, we didn't talk about Charlie Wrangle. He said something about crackers. He said, uh, the tea party are a bunch of white crackers. <laughs> Is it all true? Yeah, he said that, like... He said, you know, the tea party, he said it in a nice way. He's like, you know, the tea party types are just, you know, the those white cracker types from back, the KKK and shit like that. I'm like, white cracker. <laughs> wow. Wowzer. Wow. We just had a whole debate about that word with the whole George Zimmerman thing. And he's going to, like, say it again? You know? <laughs> it's like, dude, like, didn't you get disgraced for, like, not paying your taxes? Like, shouldn't you just shut the fuck up for the rest of your <laughs> career? Why are you even still in Congress? You know what I mean? No, I mean, you know, they, they throw it back and forth. They, yeah, the guy wrote the tax he, code and couldn't even pay his taxes. He couldn't even follow his own fucking code that he wrote. You gotta follow a code, man. You know? That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, when you, you follow see, the G code or the samurai code. But that's how you know these people aren't running anything. Like, Charlie Wrangle types and shit like that. He doesn't know anything about law or constitution and shit like that. This guy's just an old fart who just sits on his ass collecting money for doing absolutely nothing and not paying his taxes and not realizing that he's supposed to be the author of something he never wrote. Somebody else wrote for him or some lobbyist wrote for him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? These people are not in control. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The, 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 real, the real demons, the real masterminds are people we've never heard of. They're lobbyists that you can't name, you can't even pronounce. You know, some fucking Lahan Lebowski or something like, 
you know, some guy from like China or something like that is really controlling our government. You know, we right, don't know right. who, who it really is. We focus on the figureheads, you know, Obama and shit like that, who are just a bunch of, you know, blackmailed politician. Like, no pun intended, but there are people <laughs> who have dirt on them. So pun and intended. And can be controlled because of all that dirt. Right, right. You know what I mean? Y'all, right. man. Y'all, man. All right, on that thought, I uh, don't know. We got a few more seconds. What do you want to say? Do a little song, maybe. Bust a verse. A little beatbox. Yeah, I don't right. know. No, I don't know. We have exactly uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Less than 30 seconds. Let's see what you can bust. Yeah. I genius. Ah, JS. Okay, I think that was a little uh, fucked up. Fucking horrible. Okay. <laughs> I was using AJS the... Radio. We out sixty minutes. It's like that. Okay, we're going over time. Ooh, Peace. Gosh.